everybody, welcome back to Journey to VR. So this week we're gonna continue showing you some character-based workflows inside of Maya. So the last couple of demos I've done showed how to set a character up using the quick rig tool and then make some custom control rig um, handles that you can use the navigation keys, the up and down arrow keys to navigate that rig, as well as make those custom um, control rigs appear or disappear based on the proximity to the cursor, which was super cool. And then the next demo that I made was showing how the retargeter worked, specifically using an FBIK system or the human IK solver, which is on this little guy right here. So you can see how I can transfer that energy all the way through the hierarchy. And if you remember, that was really key to the way the retargeter worked. We just switched our source over to use some motion capture. And you can see we've got the same little little guy in here basically getting that motion capture of that, that simple little fight move. So that was the last thing that we showed. And we're gonna be building up on top of that and getting a bit more technical today, a little bit more complicated. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a very similar workflow but this time we're gonna be retargeting that information onto a character that was set up by a technical director. So using kind of standard Maya rigging practices to generate a rig, we wanna still be able to use that retargeter to repurpose animation, motion capture data or keyframe animation onto a, onto a new character, but get it put onto a, a technical director's rig or, or you know something that was built by hand. And this is a pretty sophisticated rig. It's obviously got a lot of controls in here for the face, but it's also got the ability to use FK and IK to pose the body parts, as well as you know things like pole vectors used to adjust the overall shape of that arm. So if we kind of move this arm down here, you can see that then that pole vector is going to be used to um, change the, the position of the arm. Kind of the same thing for the uh, for the knees here. It's got some interesting things that are happening on the spine. So there's a main chest controller that use, is used to, to place the spine or position the spine, but then there's these little um, these little guys right here that will allow you to basically tweak those guys or offset those guys. So that's what we want to do is be able to get information onto these control handles from that retargeter. And I'm gonna turn off the ability to select geometry just to make this a little bit easier. So if we jump into the HIK system, and if you remember, the first thing that we did for the quick rigged version of the character was, you know, it, it automatically fills in this, this character definition. If we look at the, the dummy fighter, it's also got that definition defined. That's really the starting point for the retargeter. You need to teach it about the basic hierarchy of the skeleton that it's looking at. So how do you do that? It's really easy inside of Maya. We just switch our character over to none and we say, let's create a new character definition. So this is gonna be the definition um, for, for this guy's skeleton. That's basically, we're trying to pick the bones that ultimately drive the skinned piece of geometry. So if we grab his leg and hit the up arrow key, I can quickly get to his hips. We'll assign that. And then if I double click on his leg here and swipe across that guy, Maya goes through and it will basically pick it in the viewport and it will assign the left leg and the right leg at the same time. The reason it does that is because I have mirroring turned on. This is based on tokens on the prefix. You can specify those yourself so it will work with any tokens in your facility. So pretty straightforward there. So again, we're gonna just kind of walk our way through here and grab that guy. So we've got this guy set, we've got that guy set. Now, if I jump down an arrow key here and grab my foot, I can just right click. It's another way of assigning bones is to right click on top of the bone and say assigned if you've selected in your viewport. So you can go sort of bi bi-directional with that, which is uh, pretty straightforward. So we wanna assign that foot there. Let's just make sure we zip up here and grab the right one. So we'll just, again, assign that guy there and let's just kind of get ourselves, whoa, I'm upside down and crazy there. <laughs> All right, so we're cool there. And let's just jump through here and do the arms. So we'll grab that guy and then I can jump down and do that. Now, if I wanted to map the, um, the role I could for this example, I'm not going to. We're just gonna grab that left hand and assign it there. We'll grab his head and again, just right click to assign that guy. Now, obviously it's uh, super important to get the, the shoulder or the clavicle. Um, very, very important to map those guys so that it looks cool when you're animating. And this is actually kind of an interesting area that we're gonna be playing around with with the custom rig. And then the next thing we wanna do is do his spine. So we're gonna grab um, this first spine joint and we'll assign it. And you can dive in here and, you know, any bones that you see on this main UI, those joints, they have to be, they have to be defined. But any of the extras that you jump in here to the kind of zoomed in versions, those are not necessary. But if the solver has them, it'll look at them and it'll, it'll use it. It'll, it'll try to, you know, it'll try to, to, to take that data and, and do something useful with it. So for this one, I'm gonna actually grab, because this is actually, um, you'll notice this is kind of interesting. Like the spines are going up here, right? But that spine joint, when I when I jump up an arrow key, isn't highlighting anything. And that's because it's actually, the way this character is set up is 
the this this bone right here is actually constrained into that other one so they can be independent of each other you know like this rig is a really complicated rig underneath there there's lots of joints and helper things happening that are kind of hidden but it, it'll still work which is really the power and the beauty of of this tool and the last thing that we could do is just go down here and grab this reference it's always a good idea to um, you know assign your reference in there just so that that's done so with that done we can now basically lock this guy off it's going to tell me there's a warning saying that my right arm isn't parallel to the x it's close enough you want your character in a t-pose this has created an offset map this is what zeroes out all the local rotation so just make sure your character is facing down the z-axis in the t-pose and and you'll be fine so now that we've done that now we need to specify you know some type of rig on this guy so what we're going to do is instead of doing a um a control rig which would be that fbik rig what we're going to do this time is we're going to create a custom control rig so custom mapping and this is um this is where the fun starts really so what I want to do is I want to start specifying what controllers are going to drive what. So that main circle, NURB circle there, is going to be his, his hips. And then this chest thing right here is going to be his chest area. Pretty straightforward. If I wanted to define extra bones down the spine, I could. I don't need to do that, though, because really the, that's, that main, the way the technical director set this up is that main chest really does kind of through constraints and things like that drive the other bones down the spine. And then we have those extra offsets that we can use to tweak. So we don't need to map any of that stuff. Um, obviously the hand effectors, we want to grab that guy, which is the, the arm controller for that guy. So we'll just assign that to there. And then we're going to do the same thing over here on the right arm controller. So we'll assign that guy. And then now this is where we start to get, oh, the head too, of course, we're going to assign the head. So with that head assigned, now what we need to do is we need to, um, to talk about how we are going to deal with mapping the elbows and the shoulder or the clavicle because this is really this is where the magic is these are my kind of hidden tricks here so what we want to do is we want to drive the position of that pole vector based on the overall position of where that elbow is so how do you do that well you just grab this guy and its pivot really isn't isn't going to be um in the right place what i want to do is i want to get the pivot zeroed out on this um where that elbow is but i want the pole vector to just point to a second node in its current position you know that kind of that offset so it's always pointing back so all we have to do is just group that guy and with that grouping done i'm going to say show polygons we'll get rid of those just so it's easier for me to snap this guy i'm going to hit the d key and i'm just going to snap that group right there to that elbow so now this is going to be the point that i want to have track that guy so we'll just assign it to that and we'll tell it to map translation and and rotation so pretty straightforward just like that so we'll do the same thing on this pole vector so we'll group it to get that extra node in there and we're going to tell it that 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 grouping now is going to follow this position so that's that's pretty straightforward now the clavicle is going to be a little bit different what we're going to do on that guy is we're going to take it and we're going to actually have it map the top of that bone right there so we're going to have it map the translation of that bone and, and the rotation of it, it doesn't really matter. Um, actually, well, no, just a translation of that guy. So then we're gonna do the same thing on this one. So we're gonna grab that guy and we're going to assign it to this side and we're gonna tell it to map the translation and, and not worry about the rotation of that. So with that done, it's going to, it's going to follow the positions of those bones. Pretty awesome. Um, because these guys are using translation to position that, that clavicle. So even though you know, you'd think, well, I just map an orientation constraint to that right collarbone, the way the technical directed up, the way I'm, the way I'm showing you is actually the way that's going to work. So super, super flexible. So we need to do um, some work down here on the feet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this foot and I'm going to assign it to here. Now you'll notice that when I click on this guy, both the foot and the toe are getting selected and that's not really what I want. So that brings me to one of the main points. This is completely customizable. And the way it ships out of the box actually is incorrect. The joint number ID for the foot and the ankle is incorrect in the file that ships with Maya. So I've modified that and it's just a simple XML file. So let me show you the original file. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Like it, it's very easy to change this. So everything that you see as far as these little markers are considered are, are being placed by these positions. So you can change those so that they match something that you want. You can also change the image that's in the background, which I'm going to do on the, on the next UI that we're gonna load up. So right down here, if you kind of scroll down here and look around here, you can see that left foot is um, anchored to the left ankle and these are tying into IDs of the HIK solver. So these ID numbers are hardwired to the HIK solver and they actually have this incorrectly set to 14 and they have the right ankle going to the right foot incorrectly set at seven. 
because those IDs aren't the right IDs for the HIK solver. So I, I'm unfor it's unfortunate that it's not um, out of the box correct, but it's an easy switch. So if you switch line 49 to make the ID 16 and line 52 to make the ID 17, it's going to work. And again, you could you could minimize, get rid of things that you don't need. You can add things. There's you know this is very very user configurable. And you'll notice that on mine, I've changed the resource. Um, it's going to look to the path of default images, and I've changed the resource to full body work. So where these files live, if you want to edit them yourself, is in your um, installation directory of Maya in resources under character controls. So I just made this character controls DTO2. And then I, in the default images here, I just, you know, took the default image and um, made my own default image with, with a little worker hat on it. So let's go ahead and check out loading up that UI and the changes that that makes. So we'll say, um, let's load our own UI configuration. We'll grab my version of it that's got the little worker helmet on there. And now you'll notice when I grab that foot, it's no longer selecting, or the ankle, it's no longer selecting the foot too. So there are independent mappings now that I can do, which is exactly what I wanted. So we'll grab that guy. We'll do the same thing over here. And then we'll grab this little guy right here and we'll just map it to that just for rotation because it's just the little toe. And we'll do uh, the same thing for that guy. And then obviously we need to do my grouping trick here. So we'll go group, we'll hit D key, we'll snap to our knee joint, hit the D one more time and we'll assign that so that that limb is going to get its, you know, its, its knee is gonna bend out and do the right thing to, uh, to follow what's going on with that, that mocap data or that retargeted animation data. So again, we'll duplicate that guy, hit the D key, and then just snap it over there, hit the D key one more time, and we'll assign that. All right, so with that done, if we go ahead and turn on our polygons for this guy, and we just kind of zoom out and just switch our source over to, um, to be that same mocap dummy fight here, you can see that these guys basically just line up on top of each other, even though one of them's using an HIK rig and the other one's using a custom control rig. They basically just work, which is super, super cool. And if we hide the display of, uh, of that guy and we go in here and maybe we grab something like this shoulder joint here, you'll notice that just the rotational values are getting driven on that joint, even though its controller is ultimately being driven by the positional information from that little, that little, that little, you know, that little node there. So super, super cool that that all just works. And the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is while this is happening, this is actually using HIK under the hood to do all the retargeting things. So all that really cool stuff that we can do, like the matching source information, um, as far as like positional data and things like that, that's all going to work. Um, even though this is going to get put onto a custom control rig so we can still use that HIK solver to transfer energy through the body during the retargeting operation so let's just scale this up to something like I don't know something like eight that looks about right and you know what we'll do is we'll jump into the HIK controls for this guy and we'll edit those properties so um, we jump over to our definition and then say edit um, HIK properties for this guy. So with that turned on, I'm gonna do a couple things. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the foot contacts because this is really cool. We turn those guys on. You'll notice that as I grab this translation node on that main body, look at his little feet here as I start to drop that character down. The toe is gonna to click down, it's gonna land on the ground and it's gonna use that FBIK solver, even though this is a custom control rig to, to deal with that, that ground plane collision. Crazy cool, super, super cool. So let's go ahead and look at those HIK properties one more time and we'll turn on on the retargeter match source. And as soon as we do that, um, just like I showed you in the last demo, you know, it's no longer going to be trying to match join angles. It's now gonna be matching world position. And as I did previously, if we jump back into the character controls for this guy, on the controls, we're gonna have the ability to dial in whether a body part tries to reach that world position. So if we grab this arm and kind of pull it up there, you'll see that it's gonna stop at that body part until I start to give it a little bit of that pull value. And then it's gonna transfer that energy all the way through that, that hierarchy on that HIK solver um, that's underneath this, that the, that's what the retargeter is using. Even though this is a, you know, a standard control rig built by a technical director, when we're doing the retargeting information, it's gonna use sort of that HIK solver as an in-between to position that custom control rig. So that's, that's just super, super powerful, crazy, crazy cool. So that is basically, um, that's basically it. So let's just zero this stuff back, back out and, you know, turn off the, uh, turn off the match source on this guy, actually, just to, uh, just to clean it up a little bit. And I'll show you the animation one final time. So if we just pop our focus to this guy and turn match source off, you know, that, that's my little guy doing his, doing his thing. 
onto that custom control rig. And now, obviously at any time, if I wanna get that information onto, the, uh, onto this, we just go back up here to our custom control rig and we just say edit bake simulation to custom control rig. It's gonna go through and, and you know, bake, that, bake that data down. And now you can see that you know, this is basically going to be all that, all that animation that's been, that's been baked onto this, onto this guy, onto this custom control rig. So you know, very, very uh, straightforward and super, super duper cool. So that is basically it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, next week, I'm gonna be showing you guys how we can take all this information, this baked character information on this character into Unity and how we can get character data from Maya into Unity. So that should be super fun. If you're taking the time to watch this video on Vimeo or on YouTube, please make sure you go back to the area. On the area, there's a Journey to VR blog. And on that blog, I've been recording many, many demos showing using uh, Max and Maya, as well as game engines to create VR and AR content. And we also have a lot of written articles and video-based interviews with some of our customers and thought leaders about what they think is super cool about AR and VR. So make sure you go back to the area and check out all that, uh, all that other work. Thanks again, everybody. Cheers.